So you want to build a subwoofer box or a custom car audio build, but maybe you're limited on the tools that you have available to use. Well, just because you're limited on tools doesn't mean that you still can't create an awesome build. One of the first tools that people commonly get is a jigsaw, but unfortunately many people don't learn how to properly use this very powerful power tool. Using the correct techniques, even a really basic tool like a jigsaw can give us some awesome results. So how do we properly use a jigsaw and what are some different tips and tricks that are very important for those of us that are using this for custom car audio or custom vehicle fabrication? That my friends is coming up. Hey guys, Mark here with Car Audio Fabrication. If you're new to this channel, here on this channel I do car audio reviews and builds and lessons like this video. So if you are new, I hope that you consider subscribing. For those of you that have been watching for a while, a lot of you guys know that I have access to a lot of different high quality tools that I use. And this is a collection that I've built over the years. But a common question I get is, Mark, you know, I don't really have those high quality tools. How can I still build if I don't have that stuff. I don't want you guys to get discouraged at all. I don't want you to feel like because you don't have all these tools that you can't also try your hand at custom fabrication. I wanted to make a couple of videos that show you how much you really can do with just some of the basic tools. So without further ado, ah, my old friend, the jigsaw. I think for many guys, myself included, this is probably one of the first tools that you ever consider getting or remember getting. What's awesome about a jigsaw is it's very versatile. We can not only cut straight cuts, but we can also use it to make curved cuts. But this versatility is also its downfall. With a lack of understanding on how to use this tool, your cuts can really look kind of ragged and unprofessional, and that's obviously something that we want to avoid when we're making a really nice, high-quality custom car audio build. So first, let's talk about how can you pick a good jigsaw. Like any other tool, you're going to get what you pay for. The more costly versions of jigsaws are likely gonna have a much smoother motor action, which leads to better cuts. They're less likely to shake as much, which allows you to make more precise cuts because the thing isn't jumping around in your hand as much. Additionally, the models that become more expensive generally will have more features. You're gonna find things like speed control. You're gonna find things like an orbital setting. Also, you may notice that this is a battery version. I'm not attached to a cord, which is something that I really like. It's easy to use this anywhere I need to in the shop. So in other words, just like any other tool, there's a wide range of how much you could really spend on the tool, depending on the quality you're looking for. But some advice I wanna give you guys, being car audio guys, honestly, I wouldn't recommend blowing your whole budget on getting a super nice jigsaw. You can get a low cost version, make do with it, and I recommend doing that because I would like to see you guys put more of your budget towards saving for something like a router. For reasons why I really like the router and some of my other recommendations, for getting one, you can check out the video on screen. Like I mentioned, one of the first settings that you have here on this particular jigsaw is the speed setting. What's nice about the speed setting is we can slow down the speed of our cut if we wanna be more precise. Whereas if we really just wanna rip through a board, let's say we're rough cutting in preparation for using a router, we can speed up the cut and go much faster. Now, in terms of the orbital setting, which you can see here, what the orbital setting will do is it actually makes the blade either just go straight up and down, like so, or if we maximize the orbital setting, you'll see that it will actually orbit forward. Now, generally, when we have the orbital setting on its highest setting, we can cut through boards much, much more quickly, but we're gonna get a less smooth result. We'll end up with a lot of chip out and the board won't look good, but that's fine if we're just rough cutting. But if we're wanting to do finished cutting, we're definitely gonna wanna leave the orbital on its lowest setting. Now, another feature that you're definitely gonna wanna look for, and this is something I strongly, strongly recommend, is get a jigsaw that has what's called a T-shank blade. This is what the T-shank blade looks like. On the right here, here we have a T-shank blade. On the left, we have what's called a U-shank blade. The problem with the U-shanks is I find a lot of times they will just actually fall out of the jigsaw while you're using it. And a lot of times in order to put these in the jigsaw, you have to mess around with a set screw. The T-shanks on the other hand, always have this real easy mechanism 
where you either just twist it or you'll pull up a lever, you insert the blade like so, let go, and now that blade is locked in place. I find that there's a lot more options for the high quality different blades that you can get in this T-shank style configuration. Now, while we're on the topic of blades, here I have a little assortment pack, which is kind of nice to have on hand so you have some different options. First off, you're gonna notice the difference in how many teeth there are. With a jigsaw blade like this one that has larger teeth, and in other words, less teeth per inch, this is going to be more for rough cutting and cutting through material very fast. On the other hand, when we have more teeth per inch, in other words, the teeth are finer, they're smaller, this is gonna be more for precision type work where we are doing like a finished cut and we don't want the cut to look ragged or sketchy. That's a technical term, sketchy. Notice that both of these blades are about the same width. And these are actually pretty sharp. They're kind of digging in my fingers, so be careful with these. But see how they're about the same width. So both of these blades, because they're kind of wide, what that means is when we're cutting through the material, they're less likely to bend and deflect, which obviously we want a nice square cut. So I actually like using these little bit wider blades for most of our circular cuts and things like that because honestly, a lot of times the smallest hole that we're gonna be cutting is you know something for like a speaker for like a six and a half or something like that. Yes, you could cut a hole for a tweeter, but if you need to do that, you're probably gonna have to step down to a much smaller width blade like this. Little comparison there, because this blade is smaller, you can obviously cut a much finer radius. But what you have to be careful about is you definitely wanna let the blade do the work. You don't wanna force the blade because this blade is much more likely to bend and deform and thus end up with a bad cut. One more feature that you can look for on a jigsaw is the ability to actually angle the base. This is something that I don't use quite often because if I'm gonna be doing an angled cut, I'd rather just do it on my table saw since I have access to that or with a circular saw. But if you didn't, I just wanted to point this out that this is actually an option for something you can do. You see if we loosen these screws on the base here, we can rotate the base so now we would be able to cut a 45 degree angle. So let's start with a real world situation for something you would normally have to do to make a custom subwoofer box. Let's say we need to cut a straight line. So I've already measured out a line here. I want this board to be this size. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this straight line using the jigsaw. Now in the jigsaw, I've loaded in this blade here. You can see that it has quite a few teeth per inch. That's because this is gonna be a finished cut, so I want it to have a nice, really clean cut, and it's also a nice wide blade, which will allow us to easily maintain going straight. To make the cut, I'm gonna put one hand firmly here to hold the workpiece. I'll have the other hand on my jigsaw here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to kiss the blade up against the edge of the board before I pull the trigger. And the reason for that is when you have it already touching the workpiece, it's going to immediately cut in. It's not going to bounce around on the outside of the piece, which if it bounces around, then you lose your starting position and you're not cleanly on the line. As I proceed to cut into the board, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that I have the base completely flat on the wood. We're not gonna want it like this. We're not gonna want it turn to an angle or like this, we wanna make sure that it's completely flat. Finally, as we're passing the jigsaw through the cut, we wanna make sure that we let the jigsaw itself do the cutting action. We don't want to be forcing it, which can lead to the blade deflecting. I took my time to go through so it was nice and straight. We can still see a little bit of the line. Look how nice and clean that edge is because we used a nice quality jigsaw blade. Link to those blades down in the video description. So right now I have it resting on the edge that I cut with the jigsaw. And I actually cut this side down with my table saw when I cut this board just to do this demo. So you can see just for an idea, here's how straight the table saw is, you can see that there's no gaps. And if we rotate to the jigsaw side, you can see, yeah, we have maybe a little bit of a gap right there, a little bit of a gap right here. But otherwise, that's a pretty nice straight cut, especially for just using the low cost tool, the jigsaw. Now let's say that we're using this jigsaw to make the front side of a ported subwoofer enclosure. So we're gonna need to measure out a port as well as the subwoofer cutout hole. I'm gonna mark out the port real quick. Now let's make our cutout hole. And I'm gonna show you guys a cool cheap trick to do this. So what I can do is I can 
draw a line from corner to corner and do that again. So now I have my center point. Next up here, I have some real high cost items. I have a piece of cardboard just from some packaging material. And then I also have a push pin. The push pin is going to be located at the center point of the board here. But what I need to do on my piece of cardboard, you can see I've done it several times already. I need to measure out the radius of my subwoofer cutout hole. To find the radius, you take whatever the diameter is of your cutout for your subwoofer and you divide it in a half. So in this case, my cutout needs to be seven and one sixteenth inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure half of that and I'll just make a new, new mark here for the start. And then half of seven and one sixteenth is three and a half plus one thirty second. So it'd be three three and 17 30 seconds. I'm gonna use the push pin to poke a little hole next to the smiley face mark. That's gonna be for my pencil lead. And then I'm gonna put the push pin through the center mark. I'll push it into the X here, push the cardboard down so it's against the surface. I'll locate the pencil lead next to the smiley face. And just like so, we can draw a perfect circle. So I need to make a starting point for the jigsaw blade to start in, and in order to do so, I'm gonna be using a drill with a drill bit. I find that the drill is also something that's very common. Most people have a drill. If you're even attempting to build your own subwoofer box, you at minimum need at least a drill. So we're gonna be using the drill with the jigsaw to complete this project. Now, in the corners of our port, we wanna do a hole in each corner. That way we can make our cuts away from each of these holes and then come back and clean them up. Now, just as a quick side note, this is something that's really handy to have. It's just a piece of wood, obviously, with a hole cut in the middle. It's set on top of a garbage can. And the reason that I like this, rather than just working on the edge of your nice workbench, which you might cut into and mess up, as you can see, I've done multiple times on this piece, you don't have to worry about this. This is kind of like a spoil board. We can just throw it away and make a new one whenever we need to. But it's also nice because since this is a circle and it's a hole, we can have our workpiece actually supported on each side while we're making this cut. We don't have to be worried about doing it on the side of the workbench where our workpiece can tip like this. We can leave it here, put all our pressure down, it stays nice and flat. Now I'm gonna start with using the jigsaw to cut the subwoofer hole cut out here. Once again, I'm gonna be using this same wide blade. I find a lot of times people will think that they have to use the skinnier blade just because they're making a curved cut, but this honestly isn't that drastic of a curve. We can get away with using this, and again, because it's wider, we don't have to worry about the blade deflecting and causing an angled cut into the wood. So there we have our cut hole. Now it's not perfect. You probably wanna use a router to get an absolutely perfect cut, but you can see since we took our time with it, things look pretty good. Now we're usually gonna end up with a nib like this right here at where we started and ended our cut. We can just use a piece of sandpaper and sand that away. Now let's cut our port cutout. Using just the jigsaw, we've been able to complete two very common tasks that you would need to do in custom car audio fabrication. We were able to do this and actually get pretty nice results because we took our time with the cutting, we made sure that we were on a nice cut speed, and we used a nice good jigsaw blade that allows for this nice smooth finish. Get the subwoofer loaded in here. Now while you guys watch that, I wanted to once again remind you that my goal with this channel is to help you guys learn the joys and excitement and fun of custom building your own car audio build. There's nothing quite like the satisfaction at an end of a project of knowing that you completed that build. I know that in a lot of my videos I show using a lot more of the advanced tools, but I truly believe by mastering the more quote unquote basic tools, you're gonna have a lot better ground to stand on once you move along to the more advanced tools and continue to progress your skill set within this hobby and or if you're doing it professionally, career. I plan to make more low budget tool videos in the future, so if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see those future videos, be sure to subscribe. A special thanks goes out to John, Brian, Ali, Jerry, EJ, Emmanuel, Truman, James, and Colin, and the rest of the Patreon support team. These guys helped to crowdfund the making of this video. Their support helped to get this jigsaw blade set, it helped cover the time for scripting this video, along with all the materials used 
for showing you guys this process. So a huge thanks to them and thank you for watching.